Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting journey. This unique episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in April. Our show is dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. And our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, today, we are honored to have two special guests chat with us. Our interview with SUMA President Randy Golding and SUMA Executive Director John Mark Nadu. Okay, so I guess this is the big question. We are here at SUMA. 2023. Tune in. How's it going? Well, we've been tuning in a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of dialogue and networking uh, and uh, um, all our different delegates uh, talking at their tables, talking at the social events, uh, talking with our trade show people, our vendors. Uh, and I think that this has been a bit of a pent up uh, need that they needed to talk with somebody and talk with neighbors and it's been excellent. I've been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of input, uh, very positive comments, uh, you know, things that we can build on. So I would say this has been uh, uh, to date a really good convention. John Mark, would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, she's, uh, Randy's really done a good job in, in encapsulating all that. I think from the staff's perspective, uh, the ability to talk face to face with our members. I mean, we've done a really good job uh, via Zoom or other virtual platforms, but the ability to really uh, have this, uh, this connection and, and conversation has been very valuable. And I think overall, people are pretty happy with the convention so far. We're, we got a day left, basically, so it's going well. I want to. <laughs> I've, I've been sitting in and on a few of the sessions, the education sessions as well, and people are engaged. People want to give feedback. People want to tell SUMA what's going on in their communities. For you and for SUMA as the executive director, John Mark, what do you do after this? What's the next steps after SUMA? Because you can't just take this information and just put it in a filing cabinet. There has to be something done. So what do you do? John Mark, do you want to start? Yeah, I could start. Uh, absolutely. So the information we gather here, whether informal conversations or through specific sessions, um, inform a lot of our advocacy, how we define our strategies moving forward. Um, we use a lot of the stories, the anecdotal at times, but um, we use the information to uh, to inform our strategies and in, in our uh, in our conversations with upper levels of government. So. Um, uh, this is this is all valuable. Um, I do quite a bit more than just convention. I, I travel the province. I, I engage with our regional directors, with our executive. We travel um, in different parts of the province, up north in particular, and really getting a sense of from the membership right on the ground in their backyard. What are the realities? There's a thousand people here. Um, sometimes it's hard to really have that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, so everything's valuable. We take all that information and, and, and run with it. What's been the biggest information that you've gar garnered from your members and delegates of this week so far? Well, I think one of the things that I've been uh, really paying a lot of attention to is the members uh, need to feel they're listened to, that their voices, their concerns, uh, their issues are something that is going to help us uh, form what SUMA has to do for the next year or two years or three years. And I've really been hearing that they feel listened to. And perhaps it's because after the pandemic, with all of the, the virtuals that we, we did, uh, we went out in, in the autumn and we did face-to-face -face regional meetings. Um, we traveled across the province and actually talked to people. And then reaffirming things here. So what, I, what I'm getting from all of our delegates, and it's, it's really good, is, is uh, the importance they, they place on having conversations with their board members, with their regional directors, um, with, with myself, uh, and definitely with administration. I'm hearing that if they have any concerns, uh, any issues come up in their, their communities, uh, they're feeling comfortable phoning our office and uh, knowing that they're going to get a response uh, and knowing that uh, you know their their needs are important to us, 
because sometimes when we do everything virtually and we're off in our own little worlds, right, things happen and we try to deal with things by ourselves uh, to solve all the problems in the world. But uh, I'm hearing that, uh, you know, they, they know that we'll provide whatever assistance we can or we'll, uh, you know, um, suggest someone that's nearby that has had the same issues. Uh, we have so many different uh, uh, vendors in our, in our benefit program with Kinetic that they can connect with to, um, you know, whether if they have a, a, a legal concern uh, or, you know, I just spoke with uh, the mayor of a community who had a devastating uh, event happen. Uh, they lost their town office and their fire hall with all their equipment. Just spoke to him, actually. Yes. And I just had such a in great conversation, and it really makes you feel good about our province, our people. And he talked about everyone, and, and, and you heard him, that, that just reached out to help without even any ask. They were just reaching out to help him. There's a lot of challenges facing Saskatchewan municipalities today, as I've learned in the conversations I've been having and listening. And one of the big ones, and I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room, is the RCMP. I was in the town breakout session just moments ago where this was brought up a few times. I know it was brought up in the villages as well. What's SUMA doing to advocate with FCM, but also with the federal government to try to alleviate some of this. And then can you also speak about something that you mentioned in the town session where you said the provinces has been collecting mm -hmm. some money from municipalities to sort of offset this. And I just want to make sure I understand what you meant correctly. Uh, I'm going to ask Jean-Marc to speak <laughs> about this. I can go through the different contracts, but Jean-Marc is, our, is it, we're very, very fortunate that uh, he has a great deal of experience, first of all with RCMP, but also uh, the work that he's done uh, as a city manager when he, uh, when he decided to leave the RCMP. But uh, he has a great deal of experience in this and he sits on the Federal Contract Policing Committee. So we're very fortunate to have this. So go ahead. You have an ace up your sleeve there. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so ace up your sleeve. Yes. So, well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I spent 25 years with the RCMP, so I, I have an inside knowledge of how the contract operates. And, and obviously, uh, I still have lots of quote unquote buddies that I, you know, I can call on and, and get some sort of inside track information. Not, not, they, they wouldn't share anything confidential or classified, but um, so what's happening with the contract? So in 2016, um, I think it's 2016, might have been 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada provided the RCMP members the ability to organize under a collective agreement. That was brand new. That's never in, in their history. I was never unionized as an RCMP member. Um, and so the federal government in 2016 um, placed a freeze on wage increases, waiting for uh, the collective agreement to be negotiated. That happened in 2022. So six years later, finally, the agreement has been signed. Um, and that resulted in a 24% increase for their salaries immediately because they hadn't had any pay increases since at least 2016, as well as a back pay. And so that's the issue that we're taking with the federal government in particular is that they negotiate. First of all, they put the freeze on in 2016 they, through Treasury Board, negotiated the collective agreement. So basically they um, negotiated with municipalities' pocketbook without their knowledge. Let me rephrase that. That's not true. Because I'm going to they play were devil's knowledge. Ad. They, were, they, they had knowledge of it happening. They had no say in uh, how it was going to, uh, you know, what the outcome was. City of Yorkton, for example, or, or in my case, the City of Portage of Prairie, we negotiate collective agreements with the firefighters or with QP, um, you know, every three years, four years, whatever the case may be. As council, they have a say as to what the negotiation is going to look like. In this case, none of the municipalities had any say on how the negotiation was going to unfold and what were the parameters of those negotiations either, right? We were told, we, I wasn't there at the time, but we were told you should plan for about two, two and a half percent. <laughs> right? Two and a half percent is what they told you to plan per year, for? Per year. Per, per year. Yeah. Okay. It turned out to be just about four. Yeah. Right? Municipalities that were in the position to be able to sort of save a little bit 
you know, that's what they sort of follow, but they weren't told uh, anything throughout the negotiation. So th that's the challenge that municipalities are facing now. And so what we've been advocating, and, and um, luckily in this province, um, the situation's a bit different. The province uh, will um, absorb those costs, but they're facing the same situation. The federal government negotiated with their pocketbook, right? And so back to municipalities, we don't have the fiscal tool to be able to, to first of all, we have to budget um, um, a even budget, right? It has to be balanced. Balanced every year. So we can't uh, budget a, a deficitary budget. So, so there's no way for us to come back and say, well, so it's all tax. So it's the same taxpayer, and now the mill rate has to go up. Uh, in Yorkton, for example, is 1.4 randy. I forget, right? So I, f I forget what the mill rate increase would that be six or seven probably. So it's it's huge. So Chris, and you know, we we did hear federal government when they said two, two and a half, City of Yorkton in 2016 started putting money away because we know we have to do this. Uh, and I think the one thing that, that is missing here is is uh, we're happy with the police and with the RCMP. I mean, they provide a really good service. We've done the cost estimates with going with the municipal versus RCMP. Um, and, you know, we're better off with the RCMP, but, you know, that gap will be closing if we looked at it again. So we put the uh, percentages away, and we have about $600,000 in reserve. Well, that's only half of what we've been asked to pay. So that's a concern. We've had Premier Scott Moe in attendance in the, over the last two days. We had Matt Love, the Saskatchewan NDP, for Carla Beck. You have the Minister of Community, I, I forget his full Government title. Government Relations. Government Relations going to be here as well. Um, are you hoping that when you bring in speakers from the provincial government, the relationship can be built stronger together? Because you're going to be dealing with this government or this opposition for some time, and you have to have a good relationship. How do you feel the relationship is, and is it comforting to know that the Premier will come and speak to your organization? It's always comforting to know that. And I think uh, whether uh, you're speaking with the board of directors of SUMA, if you're speaking with the CEO and administration, we work very hard on that relationship because this is a small province. You never, ever close doors. You always open doors. And uh, you decide, you sit down, and, and uh, uh, we have those conversations. And we've met with the Premier. We've met uh, repeatedly with government relations and other ministers. Uh, you know, and we may disagree on the outcomes. We may disagree on uh, what some of their budget decisions were, and we do, and we've let them know. Um, and uh, uh, we feel that, uh, you know, we have a good case. We have 80% of Saskatchewan's population live in urban municipalities. Uh, and we think that uh, those residents um, deserve the services uh, that we need to provide to them. Uh, and it was it was very uh, it was great hearing the premier talk about uh, the work that he does, and that's that's his job. Go out there, find businesses, find people to move to our province. But once they get here, they have to have the quality of life. They have to have the basic necessities so that they can perform those jobs um, every day that uh, the province is bringing in. Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't want to be very political here, but I'm going to ask this question, mm -hmm. and this is to both of you. Do you have a partner in this government? We're, we're working on it. Uh, we believe that, uh, you know, they have a difficult role to play too. We totally understand. That's exactly what we do in each and every one of our municipalities. When we sit down to do a budget where we have to have a balanced budget, and uh, we're seeing things, and, and uh, thank you for being with us today and this whole the few days of the convention, because you're hearing our members say, this, uh, the exemption that they took away from us for, uh, for the uh, labor portion of the PST on construction is not working for us. We're trying to rebuild infrastructure, to renew it, build new. And from the city of Yorkton, uh, when we get some in, you know, ICIP uh, grants, and right off the, the bat, the provincial government takes 7% to administration, and we get it. It costs money to administer this, but does it cost 7%? Uh, and then 6% uh, for PST, 
it starts to get like, hmm, maybe we need to have more conversations about this. Uh, maybe we can't build those roads now or provide the wastewater treatment plant that Yorkton needs. Yorkton needs a new wastewater treatment plant uh, because we're not going to meet regulations in another year and a half. So we have two canola crushing plants. We have a grain uh, uh, oats uh, processing plant. We have a major meat processing plant. If we don't have some way to treat that effluent and, and uh, uh, provide it safely, how is the jobs that are coming in, the canola oil that they're selling and exporting, how is that going to happen? So uh, we have a partner in provincial government. Could the partnership be a little better? It can always be improved, always be improved. So we like to have those conversations. How do we improve it? What do we need to do? And, you know, provincial government, what can you do to do uh, to help us out here? You talk about how the fact that you're 80 percent made up. The, the SUMA makes up 80 percent of the population of uh, uh, Saskatchewan. The other organization, SARM, is also here this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I was in the town's session, and they want more collaboration between the two of them. I want to ask this to John Mark, and then I'm going to oh, get yeah. the uh, elected official. Uh, Randy spoke up and said, and Rennie, uh, Har uh, Mayor Harper, as well spoke up and said, yes, we're working together. How's that partnership working out? Yeah, absolutely. We are... Um our advocacy groups get together periodically to share uh, and work on projects together. In fact, we've uh, earlier this week suggested to um, go back and look at a municipal uh, climate change action center, um, sort of akin to what Alberta has. Uh, that would be a partnership with, uh, with our sister organization. We participate in what we call the targeted sector support, um, which is uh, a little bit of money scooped off the top of the municipal revenue sharing that is managed between SUMA and SARM. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of examples of us contributing together. But having said that, we're not always going to agree on a particular policy. And, what? And no, no one agrees 100% on everything? What no, are you talking well, about, John right? <laughs> So, I mean, that's, that's just the reality of, you know, they have to advocate for their uh, rural communities. Uh, we advocate for the urban communities. Oftentimes, they're the same issues, policing being one of them, um, and so on and so forth. Sometimes they're not, but that's okay. That's what you know makes democracy a, a fun thing to work in. Do you find yourself, as role as president of SUMA, working closely with, and I, I'm not sure if he's Reeve Rayor or Councillor Rayor, but uh, the president of SARM? Uh, president Rayorb and I have known each other, I don't know, 25 years. Uh, we travel together to FCM conferences. Um, you know, his wife is a mayor in one of our urban communities. So uh, definitely, we have, we have a good relationship. But uh, as Jean-Marc said, you're not going to agree on everything. This afternoon, we're celebrating Municipal Innovative Awards. That's a, that's a partnership with provincial government and with SARM and SUMA. So we do a lot of things together. We recognize that we definitely have the population, the people. Uh, they have land base. You know, they have land base, um, but... Uh, they I mean, have vast they, land. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I drove through it. It's vast. Yeah, they have the land base, and they need roads, and they need bridges. Uh, and, and we talk with them all the time about the people that live on that land base. Uh, you know, they, they have land base. They have people that live there. Those people need services that the urbans provide. They want to, you know, they use our recreation facilities. Uh, we know that. They come in and uh, they use healthcare facilities at the province and many times the, uh, the uh, urbans uh, work together on. Uh, we just heard about fire protection. Uh, none of the RMs except maybe one or two have fire, uh, fire protection. Uh, they rely on the urbans. So there's things that we work together on and I think we need to really focus on how to improve that instead of looking at the negative all the time. Yes, we have some disagreements. I don't even know if they're disagreements. I just met an hour ago with, uh, with President Orb and the, uh, the chair of our assessment agency, SAMA, and we talked about some of the things that we're going to be working together on to go to provincial government on. Uh, the SARM executive and the SUMA executive met Sunday morning for breakfast before the convention. So we talked about many of the things Sean Mark mentioned. So we're always talking. Uh, and we're always working together. What we do see sometimes is some of the rural municipalities that don't totally agree with the urbans that they're around. 
And I mean, let's face it, maybe sometimes my neighbor doesn't like what my cat's doing or, or um, you know, some of those, or in a marriage. We don't agree, we don't agree there. Be, I don't know about you, Jean-Marc, but I... Even in SUMA, right? Because yes. there's people in northern yeah. uh, Saskatchewan who will yeah. not agree on what the issues are in southern Saskatchewan. So yeah. everyone, is, no one's ever going to be 100% agreed on everything. But, you know, the way to, to, to try to resolve some of that is to sit down and talk about it. Uh, and to work on it. And I just listened to our, our keynote speaker before I came up here, and you know, he talked about something that our municipalities have, you know, have really identified as an issue, and that's mental health and addictions. And he talked about that, and he talked about how he really got through a lot of that, and that was simply with sitting down and talking about it to, to people that could help him. So I think whether you're at this convention, whether you're at the SUMA regional meetings, uh, whether you're, you invite your RM next to you, that's what we do in Yorkton. We sit down, we have two RMs around us. We, we, we invite them to have dinner with us, council, some administrative staff, and we just have dinner, no agenda, just to get to know each other mm -hmm. and, and to form those uh, uh, relationships. So I think we're working on it. Will it ever be perfect? Well, maybe not in my lifetime. So, last question for both of you, and this is from an executive director standpoint and as an elected official standpoint. What do you hope the delegates of this convention go away with? When they leave and go back to their communities, what do you hope that they're able to implement or work on a little bit so that way in 2024 when you meet in Regina, you can advance some of these issues. You can advance some of these conversations that you're starting right now. So John Mark, we'll start with you. Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, for me, um, the agenda is built uh, for this convention on um, information sharing, on learning what others are going through their their um, their experiences. Right. So for me, when people leave here, I hope that they've expanded their network. And they have learned from others uh, some of the challenges that they're facing, and maybe they're similar, and that they can bring those um, those examples and those um, those experiences back to their community to maybe implement, uh, tweak because not all realities are the same. But uh, I think that's what I'm really hoping that that will uh, will have generated here, and then and then here back next year, Randy talk about the municipal awards. Uh, innovative awards this afternoon. That's what this is all about, is seeing what municipalities are doing innovative uh, to ensure that they're sustainable moving forward. Because that's, at the end of the day, they're serving a community that's not moving, so they need to be there. Randy, for you, as the elected official, what do you hope that the mayors, Reeves, uh, councillors go back and start talking about a little bit more? Because we talk about tune in, and a lot of people are talking about collaboration and working together. Is that one of the big takeaways you're that hoping for? That is one of the big takeaways and, and one of the things too that, that, I, that I think we're, we've done a great deal of work with and I think it's really coming along is the understanding that, that we, have, we have differences. You know, if you're in a village, you may think you're so different than the city or a town or in the north. And yes, there are differences, but there's so many things that are the same. So I think uh, just a good understanding that no matter where you are in this province, uh, we have residents that we have to provide services to. So whether you're in a village and, and uh, you're struggling with fixing your sidewalks, I can say in Yorkton it's the same thing. I could say in Saskatoon when I go for walks, it's the same thing. So I, you mean, I the, like you mean the potholes in Saskatoon are not unique to Saskatoon? They're everywhere. <laughs> I joke, I Charlie, know. I apologize, Mayor Clark. Okay, but you know what? Uh, potholes are a part of what we're going to be facing with. Spring is always wonderful, but they seem to bring out the potholes. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so I love to have conversations with, with, my, with my residents saying, okay, you know, we can certainly fix every pothole in the city, but how much are you willing to pay for that? Because we can't just do your street. <laughs> so, you know, help us out here, provide the, the input for me. So I think if, when people are leaving and they're driving home and they're thinking, what did I learn in this convention? What can I use? It's, it's about going home and feeling, feeling good that you've got the knowledge to work with your residents and you've got phone numbers 
you know, on your phone that you can phone people if there's if there's any issues, if there's any pro any problems. But also, one of the things I said in the president's report: let us know what's going well, because sometimes we we you know we dwell on those negatives. What's gone well, and then hopefully we can even improve on that. So that's that's what I hope that everybody driving home, and I hope the weather's good, <laughs> that they'll be having some time to think about this and uh, that they'll be listening to our, our, Muni, our MuniCast podcasts about you know, what SUMA is doing and really understand we're their organization, we're their president, we're their directors, and feel free to call us. I know Jean-Marc's phone is on most of the time and so is mine. Uh, I don't really seem to have a life other than municipal politics. So, yeah, bring it on. Thank you so much, Randy. Thank you so much, John Mark. I want to remind everyone that in the month of May and the month of June, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will be having an episode with a member who has been here at SUMA, and we'll be broadcasting that every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the month of May and June. So tune in for those special episodes. We dive into a lot of the issues that we're talking about here, but we also dive into a lot of local issues. Randy, John Mark, thank you so much for allowing me to broadcast here and talk to your local leaders. It's been greatly appreciated. Well, Chris, and this just came from some collaboration of you putting out a call to Mike Strack and our VP. <laughs> And, and starting off that, and that's, that's what happens. The momentum starts, but it has to start someplace. So thank you for joining us here in our province. It's been my pleasure, I can say, and this is my last statement on this. This has been the most friendliest welcome I have ever received besides the, 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 the random glances of, oh, you're media. We're not <laughs> used to the media being here that long unless it's a political speech. So I appreciate it, and I look forward to being in Regina with you in 2024. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. <laughs>